Hey everybody, welcome back to another video within the Generative AI tool series. And in this video, we'll talk about how you can boost your productivity by using ChatGPT's desktop application available on Mac. So it comes with a lot of features and I'm pretty sure a lot of these features are going to help you uh, conduct your, you know, daily routine task or, you know, complete your daily routine task uh, more seamlessly. It's really going to help you in a lot of redundant work, like moving files around, copy and pasting stuff. So it's more of an experience. Like it's like a, an assistant is sitting right there at your fingertip. So if you're writing a book, it can help you co-author it. If you're doing some research work, it, it can really help you take those notes, summarize those notes, uh, take pictures. If you don't understand a particular diagram, if you're writing an email to your boss, it's really going to help you co-author it. And, you know, um, uh, co-write it and even summarize and even rephrase it. So uh, a great tool and a great experience at your expense. So let's go ahead and explore it. The very first thing you need to do, you need to go ahead and download it uh, from the OpenAI's website. There's just one little constraint. Uh, let's go here. So there's just one little constraint that uh, this desktop app is only... I'm not sure if you can see it, uh, but let me go ahead and zoom it for you guys. All right. So the desktop app is only available for Mac OS 14 plus. So make sure you have that uh, OS upgraded or installed uh, with Apple Silicon M1 or better. So that's like one little constraint and coming to Windows later this year. So that's one thing. All right, let's see. So let's see it in action, first of all. So all you need to do is you need to uh, hit options and option on your keyboard, not other options. It's just option and space. And there you have it. So this is the whole experience that you get. Uh, you can type in your messages. For example, if I just say hello. Uh, so it's going to take you to the uh, desktops uh, application experience. Uh, so option space is more like a shorthand. So option space, then you see the attachment button. You get a lot of uh, different options here. You can upload a file, you can upload a photo, you can take a screenshot, entire screen, uh, take a photo and stuff, uh, stuff like that. So for example, if I go ahead and take a photo, so there you have it. There I am. So let's say, all right, so. What do you see in the picture? Probably a bald man with a thumbs up wearing a gray shirt. But let's see the vision capabilities of it, at least. In this picture, I see a person with a beard, short hair, didn't call me bald. So wearing a gray shirt, holding a microphone, I'm not holding a microphone and giving thumbs up with the right hand. Mm, yeah, I think it just flipped the picture. So. I'll pass with that. The background appears to be a dark curtains, the person looking directly at the camera and smiling. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, options and you can even drag and drop your images. So like I have an image here. So this like uh, one of my favorite quotes from Albert Einstein. It says in theory, theory and practice are the same in practice. They're not. So not everything theoretical is practical. All right, so I'm going to drag and drop this photo over here and I'm going to ask ChatGPT, uh, can you tell me what this picture says? Enter and it's uploading one attachment and let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, in theory, theory and practice are the same and practice they're not Albert Einstein. So pretty cool stuff. All right, so let's explore some more. What else can we do with ChatGPT on Mac desktops? So I have a code here, which happens to be a simple factorial program, but it's not optimized as it uses a for loop. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask uh, ChatGPT to sort of optimize it. So I'm going to go here within the attachment icon. I'm going to uh, select take screenshot. And as you can see, uh, it has available like if you want to take the screenshot visual studio code test by uh, and yes so here we have a screenshot and then can you optimize the code and let's see uploading one attachment and 
any time now. Okay, remove unnecessary comments. So, all right, so there we go. So we have been given a factorial based program where you can uh, sort of enter your integer and it's more elaborative and more sense. So when you have some sort of a description over here. So pretty cool. And I can just copy and control A, control V. So, all right. So here we have a more elaborate recursive solution and we can also enter our desired number. So pretty cool stuff. Another usable tactic that you can adopt while researching something. For example, if you have um, a paper coming up that you need to submit within your university or your college. For example, I was going through this particular blog by Caltech about quantum mechanics and quantum physics. So uh, let's say I want to sort of add these particular two paragraphs within my paper. So all I need to do is to copy and uh, then I have the options over here. Can you rephrase these paras? And I can go ahead and paste it and that's it. So experience wise, it's great and it really helps and it's like uh, uh, the responses are speedy, so I can just catch up things real quick and I can work on my documents, on my emails, on my, you know, daily routine task or as I mentioned, research work in a more uh, profound and a more seamless way. So I don't have to go ahead to my browser. I don't have to log into my chat GPT application or Mistral or Anthropic code or whatever assistance that I, I have available through the web. So I don't have to do that. I can just use my fingertips and chat GPT is there to help me. So that's the best thing about the whole experience. And that is something I really like about it as well, because it really, really complements a lot of work uh, that we have to do, which might not seem work like, uh, but sometimes it, do, it does when you're doing a more elaborative work. Uh, for example, when I was writing my thesis, if I had something like this, it could have been a great help uh, because uh, I remember when I was writing my thesis, my whole desktop wasn't as clean as you see here. It was all scattered with, you know, documents and uh, images and diagrams and whatnot. And, and, and a system like this could have really helped me, could have really helped boost my productivity. And that is something that I want for you guys. Uh, if Despite the fact that if you're a product manager, if you're a software engineer, if you're a researcher, this tool can really, really help you and uplift your work and refine your work. And if you're procrastinating, then again, it's a great tool for your support. So let me know how did you find uh, the new available tool. Again, uh, if you have a Mac OS 14 plus and if you are lucky enough to have a M1 chip, you can just go ahead and download it and start using it. There is one condition and uh, which might be a bit, you know, problematic is that uh, if you're not using the plus version, then you might have some constraints within the messages and the number of tokens that you can use on daily basis. So yeah, that's a bit of a pickle, uh, but I'm lucky enough to have a uh, chat GPT plus uh, on my desktop and on my web experience. So uh, I find it quite useful and helpful. Let me know what you guys think and I'll see you in the next video.